Deep in the Sussex countryside, just a few miles from Midhurst, lies a community of Buddhist monks living behind an open door. Uh, yes, well, my name is Ajahn Karuniko. But Ajahn, the meaning of my name, Ajahn means like teacher. And Karuniko is the name I was given when I became a monk. And to give you a, ni a nice name with a, a good quality to aspire towards. So it comes from the word Karuna, which means compassion. So it means one who's compassionate. That's my name. And what I do, at the moment I'm the abbot of this monastery. And I oversee... So the running of the monastery and um, make sure different areas in terms of the maintenance of the monastery and um, looking after the teachings of uh, the monks and nuns in the monastery and also the people who come to the monastery um, you know, receiving groups and teachings for the people who visit the monastery also. Yeah. I always find with the monastic life you're giving up one level of happiness to realise what I would say a greater level of happiness that comes to more the meditative life and, and, and the insights that come from that. So, I, you know, in my way of thinking, I gave up a lesser happiness for a greater happiness. You know, at the time of the Buddha, there were some people who were pretty high developed in their spiritual path and they had a very quick <laughs> enlightenment. <laughs> but I guess for most of us it's hard work <laughs> because our conditioning is so much in being goal-oriented, being very ambitious or anxious about what we are doing and so that adds a lot to our suffering and where the heart doesn't feel free. So it's really more a question about stopping and looking this way. What drives me? You know, How do I actually contribute to my dissatisfaction? <laughs> and partly the, the uh, scripture of, of Theravada Buddhism. It's called Dukkha, often translated with suffering, but it's more the kind of underlying unsatisfactoriness of life, where we struggle always against, you know, to make things better, to look better, to uh, feel better. <laughs> so it's, it's a slow, slow awakening, yeah. and eventually the liberation, you can feel it by the fact that you suffer less and less and less and less. So it's more a path towards happiness. Well, I mean, there's a lot of, as a, as a, when you become a, a Buddhist monk, you take on a lot of rules, 227. Uh, so it's quite a refined way of living, you see. So uh, it's all about relationships towards, you call it the opposite sex, relationship to the things you have in your your belongings, about asking for things, about harmlessness, about relating to each other. So it's quite an involved sort of discipline. And that's why you have two years as novice, so you really get to know about the rules, you know, the rules that you, have, you follow as a Buddhist monk. So who I am, I'm a, what is called a Samanera, a novice monk. Um, and I'm assisting um, senior monks which uh, is kind of a tradition that we carry uh, that comes from the Buddha's time um, and which is basically we, we, we encourage the junior monastics to take care of the elders basically so everything we can assist them with like doing the laundry, um, cleaning their uh, rooms, um, helping them with you know washing their bowls everything that that is related to caretaking uh, we do it and we see uh, one of the best forms of practice to practice our generosity our um, our capacity to help others and to respect the elders that's i think a big learning in this monastery um, one of the things that we miss in society is actually um, recognizing uh, the wisdom from the elders, from the old people, uh, the experience that they carry through their lives. Many people see old age as something really bad and, you know, first signs of dying or n something like that. But, you know, well, when I look at myself, the older I get, the, you know, I think the, the wisdom 
I recognize the wisdom from it and I look at my past and I see um, all the things that I've been through and I can teach that to younger people. So. So I think one of the main reasons the monks wear the robes is it's a very helpful supporting structure for the training for someone who wants to train their heart and purify their heart. The robes help as a very clear reminder of that intention. So every day as you're going through your activities, you see the robes and you feel the robes and they remind you that that's your orientation in life. And uh, having that can be very helpful for people and a valuable reminder on a daily basis. And I think it can be a valuable gift to others as well because it reminds other people who see you wearing the robes that that's an opportunity in life. So it's a reminder for the individual practitioner, but also it's, it's a gift and an offering to others to say, this is a, an opportunity that we have in life to, to train the heart, purify the heart, and bring out those qualities in our life for our own benefit and the benefit of others. So when we go on arms round uh, into the local towns or villages, that's a tradition that goes back two and a half thousand years to the time of the Buddha. Uh, and in India at that time, the, the, the Buddha would, would go on a morning alms round into a town or village and collect some food. And then he would come back to where he was staying in a, in a forest or a park nearby, um, maybe spend the day practicing meditation. And then in the evening, people from the village or the town would often come and approach him and ask him for some teachings. Uh, so it was always this very much a, a two-way relationship where both parties benefited and so he would be offering the spiritual support and the people in the town or the village would offer the material support. Uh, we have a forest committee and they, you know, they organise all the work and, the, and things that happen in the forest and that's a committee of um, lay people with a, a representative for also from the, from the monks as well. And then we have a couple of friends who organise all the garden work around the house here because of course I say we can't damage plant life and we could advise in terms of you know plant trees or do this there but you know we're not allowed to actually uh, you know damage plant life. Yeah my name's Alan I, uh, I'm i the caretaker at, uh, at the monastery um, and I moved in in January during the winter retreat. I just knew I had to change something in my life it just wasn't working so I was just having a normal life, relationship, job, mortgage, um, and, and I, I just knew I wasn't happy. And then I stayed for three nights, went away, um, and within two weeks I wanted to come back again and spend another few days. Um, and I came for the second visit, and on the day I arrived, the maintenance manager handed his notice in, or sorry, the maintenance man handed his notice in, um, and the next day I was asked if I was interested in the job. And yeah, so I've now been here for three months, meditating twice a day, following the same routine that the monks follow, um, and then doing the day-to-day -day maintenance around the monastery and, uh, and the other buildings. I'd, I'd, I'd recommend it to anybody, even if, you, even if you're not Buddhist. Um, as I said, I mean, I'm still fairly new into Buddhism, and just, just being here, I think, just gives you even if you come for a three day stay, just three days out of the world, just switch the phone off, turn the TV off, come and do a bit of meditation, um, and just, just as I said, be in these surroundings and, and just try and switch the mind off for a few days. I think, I think everybody should, uh, yeah, just come and, come and give it a go. This closed community always has its door open to anyone who'd like to take a step back their busy day-to-day -day life and appreciate the environment around them.